Right, hello again. So, it is still Friday and it's time to start the weekend. And I'm going to start the weekend, hopefully, with a bang. Um, package turned up today, parcel in the post um, from the postie. And inside this rather large box were some rather small bottles buried under about half a ton of packing peanuts. Um, and they were from my good friend and previous employee, uh, Ollie Chilton. This is what it looks like who uh, worked for me for a while uh, under me at the whiskey shop in York um, because he was working at the Starbucks directly opposite and spent more time in my shop than he did working for them. So in the end, I decided that I might as well hire him and pay him uh, and he could get a wage and not get into trouble with his bosses at Starbucks. And that set him on the road to where he is now working for the whiskey exchange. The lucky bastard. Um, so he... Um, had already sent me a batch of um, samples as I started the challenge back in back in January. Um, unfortunately, he hadn't read the rules properly, and half the samples that he sent were ones that I technically can't use because they're um, bottlings of uh, releases of versions that I've already got standard versions of, and he just just sent me loads of stuff going oh I'll give you loads of rare stuff and it was like actually Ollie I need to make sure they're standard bottlings rather than the random stuff that you've sent me which I've no doubt is amazing but I've got to get the standard bottlings so he's gone through the list of what I've got left to get um, and he sent me through a few where it's ones that there isn't a standard bottling as such and therefore he's sent me what he has got which includes this one now this is very, very, very highly regarded. And Kleinleash I did last week and was pretty amazing. So if you've not seen it yet, go back and watch Kleinleash. I can't remember what number it is. In fact, I'll look and I'll tell you now and I'll try not to get a glare in my glasses. And I'll have a quick peek so I can tell you what number to go and watch. Come on, you slow ass machine. Hurry up. Kleinleash was number 103 and we're on 112 so it's not that far back so go back and watch the Kleinleash one because that is all the history about Kleinleash stroke Brora stroke Kleinleash one and two and all that lot so Brora was the original Kleinleash which was built in 1819 by the Marquis of Stafford who became the first Duke Duke or Earl, Duke, I think, of uh, Sutherland, which is the region where um, where Brewer is. Um, it was bought in 1896 by a guy called James Ainsley, who owned a Glasgow-based um, blending company. He went into liquidation, and the company in 1919 uh, was... 1919? 1918. 1919, 1919 um, was bought by uh, a company called Scottish Distillers Limited, who became DCL, who became Diageo. So it's, it's been under Diageo's wing of their subsidiaries for donkey's years. Um, but it became a victim of its own success because in 1967, they built Klein Lease literally over the road. So there was, at one point, there were two distilleries that were both called Klein Lease. They were the, the um, Klein Lease, the second one, the new one, they called Klein Lish because they were basically using the name of the old one that was so highly regarded and going, it was, you know, right, we need more, so let's make more, but we'll build another distillery, but we'll call it the same so people can't really tell. It kind of muddies the waters because it's difficult to then know when the original Klein Lish became Brora um, and who owned it because there's shares going around and all sorts of stuff. But essentially, the kind of slump of the mid to late 70s, early 80s led to... Um, what, what was now Brora, the original Kleinish distillery, being closed down. It's not demolished. Um, the buildings are still standing and part of the old distillery is actually part of the, uh, it's the new, the new Klein, Kleinish, new version, their visitor centre. It's really, really high regarded. Essentially, Brora was more, um, uh, it was more heavily peated, more intense, more smoking than Kleinish was, but it was more gentle really really highly regarded real proper like cult status whiskey no no question this is like this is the one and um obviously it's getting increasingly hard to go uh, to get hold of because there's less and less stocks there was a 40 year old um released in 2014 there was an official bottling by diageo um i want to say official but it was from diageo but we're not talking standard bottlings now these are getting older and older and older because of, of when it closed down uh, it was a 40 year old released by diageo in 2014 and they, they were selling it for seven thousand pounds 
at the time it was the most expensive that Diageo had sold. I'm sure there's some more expensive ones since then. This particular one looks like this. And it is a, it's an official bottling from Diageo. It was released in 2011. It's a 32 year old that was distilled in 1978, which is the same year I was born uh, and bottled in 2011. It's released at 54.7%. The Whiskey Exchange haven't got it on their list anymore. They've got it as out of stock. Master of Malt have got it as discontinued. Amazon, believe it or not, are selling it. And Amazon.co.uk are selling that bottle for £998. So I am bloody lucky to get this off Ollie. I think he's not thinking straight because he's actually, not him, his wife is pregnant. So he's an idiot. And I can tell you he's an idiot because he, you don't want to get your wife pregnant, especially not three times. That's just dumb. So um, all the best to him, but he's clearly not thinking straight by sending me this. But good luck to you, mate. You're going to need it. But don't have any more than one. I, trust me on this. So uh, so it's 50, 54. Yeah, 54.7%. Uh, I haven't checked if it's a single cask, actually. I'll do a quick, no, I'll pour it first because I really can't afford to drop this and spill it. Because on that basis, this is about 50 quid. Let me just check because I have to do this justice because this could be well up there with your yeah, Lady Bank, Lady Bank, Lady Burn, and uh, Glenvor for just unbelievableness and rarity and expense and everything like that. So I did, I had found it. Um, bam, bam, bam. Yeah, does it say, is it a single cask? Is it a single cask? Are you gonna tell me or not? Part of this, part of the Azure special releases for 2011, but I can't see whether, doesn't say. You bastards. So it was a, a limited edition bottle, so it's, in, Mm, see that the picture there is a limited edition bottle of one uh, that's number 1164 which seems a lot for one cask of a 32 year old who knows I don't know it might be a few it might be a couple of casks anyway so I've got some water just in case but I might not need it this is how I'm going to see my weekend in it's not too bad really is it this challenge has been hard work and it's been difficult but times like this makes it all worthwhile. It'll be worthwhile at the end when I see the final total that's gone to the Children's Heart Surgery Fund as well. Speaking of which, I'm on about 700 quid, which is fantastic and absolutely brilliant, but it, I've not had many donations recently. I'm not the type of person that's gonna keep asking for people to donate and everything like that, but I really, really wanna get as much money as I can for this charity. It's the sole reason for me doing this. This, Stuff like this is amazing, but it's second to raising money for the Children's Heart Surgery Fund. You should know by now why I'm doing it. I've done the video of why, I've, why I'm doing it. If you don't know the reason behind me doing this challenge and why I'm trying to raise money for the Children's Heart Surgery Fund, please go and watch the why I'm doing it video. That explains everything. Um, but if you can spread the word, if you've already donated, that's absolutely brilliant. And there are plenty of people out there who have done it. But if you can keep telling people and keep notifying people and keep letting people know and sharing the challenge and trying to get 5,000 pounds, I think it's possible. I, I honestly do think it's possible, but a thousand pounds would be a start. A thousand pounds would be, would be brilliant. Um, so if you can keep telling people, it makes, you know, this, this is a high point of the challenge. I'm very, very lucky to have this and I'm honored and very grateful to Ollie. But I would rather not be drinking this and be giving the Children's Heart Surgery Fund £5,000. But doing this will hopefully mean that I can do that. Does that make sense? I'm rambling a bit. It's, it's late, I'm tired, and I'm about to drink some broth 32 year old. Ridiculous. So, lovely smokiness on the nose, but very gentle, very soft. There's intensity there, there's some heat from the alcohol, but it's not too... It's not, it's not too intense and not too burning. It's not really at the back of your nose, but it's enough of a intensity that you're feeling it there. Oh, there's a lot going on in there. There's sweetness, there's richness, there's depth, there's age. There's kind of, there's just a, 
there's, there's this sense of antiquity to it, like old furniture and antique shops and things like that. Kind of beeswax and leather and old oak and things like this. And smoke and a, a it's not bonfire, it's like a smoke in a, it's a smoke from a fire in the lounge of a very old stately home. But there's a slight freshness to it as well, surprisingly so. It might be the alcohol, it might be the alcohol intensity that's just it, it making me feel like there's a freshness, but it's kind of actually burning my nose a little bit. But I don't think there is, I think there is like a fresh, a, a subtle freshness to it as well. Here we go. Holy crap. That's ridiculous. Honey, smoke, peat, malt, toffee, caramel, popcorn, milk chocolate, milk chocolate hobnobs. I've been on I've been eating them recently, so that's probably like why it's in my head. Still going. It, it's it's fading, but it's fading beautifully. It's not disappearing, and it's still there. There's beautiful warmth, a lot, of, a lot of honey. It's a fantastic combination of like honeyed sweetness and this smoky intensity, but it's not fiery. It's not harsh, it's mellow. I don't want to add water to it. I really don't want to add water to it because I think it's unbelievable without water but I'm gonna risk it. My fear of adding water to it is essentially that I put too much in and it dilutes the flavors that are in there because that is something else. Jesus, that is amazing. There is so much on that. That is everything that I love about whiskies and about old whiskies. It's the complexity, it's the, the intensity, but it's, when I say intensity, I mean it's, it's just the amount of flavors that are in there. Not, they're not strong, they're not smacking me in the back of the throat, they're not, they're not shouting at me. There's just so much going on that it's, it, it, and it's not overwhelming. It's, it's not, it's just married beautifully. There's so many flavors in there, it's ridiculous. And you don't need to drink a lot of it. Thousand pounds is a bargain because you only need that and that'll last you a couple of hours because you'll still keep tasting it. That was one of the things I loved about the Ardbeg 1977 was it, it you could drink a tiny, tiny bit and it would last for bloody ages because you just keep tasting it through the night. Right, I'm risking it. I've got a little bit left in that pot from Ollie. So if I do cock it up, I don't want to put too much in. If I do put too much in, I've got a little bit left, but I'm not going to have that on camera. Right. It's not really done much to open it up on the nose. It's still there, fortunately. A bit more citrus coming through though. Kind of uh, like orange peel. But I don't think I even put too. Uh, I don't think I put enough water in because it's not massively different. It's taken the edge off the alcohol, but to be honest, the, the depth and complexity of flavors is, is still there. It's not weakened it. It's not diluted it. Didn't need to add water in, to be perfectly honest. It's unreal, it really is. It, it's one of the best whiskies I've ever had, full stop. It's just phenomenal. That's like the best bits of every really good whiskey all around Scotland, Isla, Highland, Islands, Lowlands, everything. Every good part of a whiskey that you'd want, all put together absolutely masterfully and put in my bottle and put in my glass amazing ollie you you're amazing mate every bad thing i've said about you you know i didn't mean it anyway but mate that is unreal amazing stuff thank you so much for that
part of me is tempted to keep that little bit to wet the baby's head when it turns up. Yours, not mine. Um, but I might have to finish that off tonight because I've had a shit week. No, it's definitely not chill filters either because there's bits floating around in it. Unbelievable. Get a brewery if you can because I've been lucky enough to have two previously. I had one of the brewer rare malts and everyone I've come across have been unreal. Really, really good. And it's probably one of the most highly rated um, malt whiskies around. Um, I, I know very few people that really don't like it. Um, yes, something special. That's a nice way to start the weekend off. I shall try very hard not to finish that off. And I shall see you at the next one. Cheers.